Well, that was mental. I can barely believe what I've just seen. I'm not sure if I'm just in shock or whatever, but I feel fairly sanguine about the whole thing. It just feels like it's one of those things for me. It's virtually a year ago to the day that Chelsea were trounced at home. Do you remember that 5-2 at Stamford Bridge, Sam Allardyce, West Brom? Chelsea got battered by West Brom. People started throwing their toys out of the pram, me included. And Chelsea went on to become European champions. That's what this team are capable of. That's what Thomas Tuchel is capable of. It was a bad day at the office. Full credit to Brentford. I thought Brentford were brilliant. We've struggled against them twice. You know, we only beat them in the away game because Ben Chilwell decided to score a rocket of a shot. We've, we find them very difficult to break down. They're a good side. Thomas Frank is an excellent manager. And in Christian Eriksen, they have elevated their whole squad. Full credit to him today, by the way. Could have done without him scoring. Just brings back memories of that goal he scored at... Uh, Stanford Bridge, the first time Tottenham had won there for 28 years. But we were we were beaten. We were well beaten. We weren't good enough. A lot of the players really do need to look in the mirror. So many players at this club are just not good enough. There are so many players who currently play for Chelsea that are simply not good enough to be anywhere near the first team. Marcus Alonso is absolutely nowhere near good enough to play for Chelsea. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is absolutely nowhere near good enough to play for Chelsea. Cesar Azpilicueta is absolutely nowhere near good enough to play for Chelsea. Timo Werner, I don't have to get started on because he is not a professional footballer. Timo Werner is not a professional footballer. He has absolutely no right to pretend to be one. It is an imposter and I'm convinced that we are part of some elaborate joke that is being played upon us. There is no way that that man is a footballer. So it's actually incredible how well we do considering that we are carrying players like him. We then bring on somebody like Lukaku who doesn't want to be at the club. There is a lot going on. But do you know what? I don't know if it's just because I am feeling fairly positive about the future of Chelsea, but I feel like everything is going to be okay. I really do. I still think that we can win silverware this season. I still think that the Champions League isn't in jeopardy. I don't think that there is any issue with us qualifying for the Champions League whatsoever. I don't think top four is in jeopardy. I don't really think top three is in jeopardy, to be totally frank with you. I genuinely believe that this is just simply one of those days. And potentially, I'm trying to be as positive as possible here, but potentially this result, this embarrassment is going to give this crop of players that little boost as we go into our season-defining game against Real Madrid. That's what our season's about now. Our season's not about Brentford at home. I don't care about Brentford at home. I've never met a Brentford fan in my life. Lived in London my entire life, never met a Brentford fan. I don't care. What I do care about is what we're going to do against Real Madrid. So maybe that is what we need. Maybe that is going to give us the impetus and the urgency to make sure that we turn up and we don't get too uh, confident against Madrid. Maybe we're going to be all systems go. But you know what? I think because of what's been going on with Chelsea at the moment, the club is certainly in the most rocky period for two decades. Certainly, certainly that, if not longer. But I think now off the back of an incredible run that Chelsea have been on. Maybe now's the time to actually give thanks to Thomas Tuchel and to the lot of these players who have been absolutely magnificent. You know the games that really mattered? The Chelsea games that we were focusing on, the games that we were desperate for Chelsea to win. That Newcastle game comes to mind. Lille away comes to mind. The games where we really needed to turn up, fight, deliver. The squad did that. Kai Havertz really stepped up when it mattered. Antonio Rudiger really stepped up when it mattered. Edouard Mendy, always count on him. Thiago Silva, Mateo Kovacic, N'Golo Kante. We have a spine of legends at this club at the moment. And yeah, today didn't go well. Today feels a bit depressing and, you know, it's so easy to get bogged down in, in how bad we were and how good Brentford were and how we got it so wrong and where it all went wrong and why did we play four at the back? Or you could just go, do you know what? We've been on an amazing run. The season still has a lot of twists and turns. Today's result in a vacuum doesn't really mean anything. We're, we're not going to win the league. You know, we are nowhere near good enough to win the league. We aren't as good as Liverpool. We aren't as good as Man City. They can tussle that out. We're so much better than Manchester United, Tottenham and, uh, and Arsenal who have designs on finishing above us in the, in the league, which they're not going to do. So I feel fairly sanguine about the whole thing. I don't think that we need to be too irate. I don't think that we need to be too concerned about everything. I think the instability at the club is a worry. And this could be a warning sign. This could be something to really focus on and, and panic about. Or it could be an anomaly. In a few days' time, we could be celebrating a victory against Real Madrid. 
That is what we could be doing. We could be celebrating a Mason Mount winner against Real Madrid. So this isn't ideal. You know, we've come off the international break. We went into it on a high. We've bounced back with a low. Brentford recording their first victory at Stamford Bridge since before the Second World War. 1939 was the last time they won at the bridge. A win worth waiting for, I'm sure their fans will tell you, if you can find any. Um, but it, overall, I don't think that we have anything to be too worried about. We have questions that need to be answered. There are so many questions around the club, and I think that there is some dead wood. I think there are so many players playing for the club that are obviously not good enough to play for Chelsea long term. We have so many players who need to be moved on, and too many of them started today. Too many of them started. So there are issues, but overall, I'm not going to be too bogged down in it. There are there are moves that need to be made. Ruben Loftus Cheek needs to find a new club. Cesar Aspilaqueta for me. Is past his best. Marcus Alonso shouldn't play for Chelsea ever again. Timo Werner should have never played for Chelsea to begin with. But these are the cards that we're dealt. So what we need to do now is make sure that we make the right moves in the next transfer market, make sure that the right moves are made when we decide who the new board are, who's going to come in and take over the club. They That needs to be done correctly. But it's one of those things. And like I say, Chelsea were battered by West Bromwich Albion a year ago this weekend. Sam Allardyce celebrating at Stamford Bridge. You know, look how that season ended. We are currently the world champions. We've won a Super Cup and we've won a European Cup since then. I really don't see this as uh, as a need to panic. We simply, we simply got it wrong today. Thomas Tuchel started an unbalanced team, I guess. It was... It was a weird side. I wasn't overall impressed with the team that he selected, but he will be picking that team because we have Real Madrid in mind. The individual mistakes weren't good enough. The individual performances weren't good enough. There was a beautiful goal by scored by Antonio Rudiger that nobody will talk about because it was scored in a uh, in a match like this. But generally, and overall, we were dreadful. You know, there was a lack of effort. There was a lack of urgency. There was a lack of motivation. There was a lack of dedication. It didn't go our way. Everything went wrong. But look, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. We're going to go into the game against Real Madrid. Loftus-Cheek won't be in the team. Timo Werner won't be in the team. Marcos Alonso won't be in the team. And therefore, we have a very good chance of winning the game. I imagine that uh, the reaction to this will be huge, won't it? So I'm uh, probably going to keep off... Uh, Keep off the socials, but depending on how people react to this video, I might do a live. We could do a little chat about it again in a couple of hours' time, see how people are thinking. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like, click subscribe. Got it, really. Never mind.